Crocodiles are one of the most fearsome predators alive, with their armored bodies, exposed interlocking teeth and cold calculating stare. But beneath their fearsome appearance lies something even more remarkable. They are some of the last surviving large reptilian predators having outlived the non-avian dinosaurs. They've barely changed in millions of years, or so we're told. But in fact, crocodiles are not living fossils. Their ancestors once ran on two legs, ambushed huge dinosaurs and even roamed the seas with scaleless skin. Today's crocodilians look remarkably similar to their ancestors from the late Cretaceous. Their body plan is highly effective for ambush predation. A long snout, powerful jaws, eyes and nostrils positioned just above water, and strong tails for swimming. However, despite their very reptilian appearance, crocodiles are more closely related to birds than they are to lizards or snakes. This is because whereas birds have evolved and diversified into millions of different forms, modern crocodilians like crocodiles, alligators and gharials haven't changed much in their body shape. This leads many to say that crocodiles are living fossils. However, that nickname is misleading because while their modern form since then changed, the lineage of crocodiles is incredibly diverse. To understand how they became the ambush predators we know today, we need to go back to where it all began. If we travel back 240 million years, we'd find the ancestors of both crocodiles and birds, and they would look very similar. This may come as a surprise, as birds don't look anything like these giant reptiles, but crocodiles and birds both descend from a group of reptiles known as the archosaurs, which includes crocodiles, dinosaurs and birds. Within the archosaurs, there's a subgroup called crocodilomorphs. This group includes more than crocodiles, alligators and gharials, as well as their many now extinct relatives. But early crocodilomorphs weren't always the semi-aquatic ambush predators we know today. Far from it. Many were fully terrestrial, with long limbs and a more upright posture. They were often fast, active predators, some resembling modern-day dogs in build. One of the earliest known crocodilomorphs is Hesperosuchus, a slender, agile creature that probably walked on four legs, but may have walked on two, at times. Now, remember when I said that crocodiles and birds came from similar-looking ancestors? Meet Teleocrator, an archosaur more closely related to birds. It measured around 2.1 to 3 meters or 7 to 10 feet long and looked remarkably like a crocodilomorph at a glance. But inside, their ankle bones were nothing alike. Teleocrator had ankles designed to be more stable while running, a feature of the group of Ametetarsalia, which means bird ankle. Fossils like Marasuchus and Lagerpeton show that long before true dinosaurs appeared, their close relatives were already testing out bipedal movement with upright postures. In short, the clade of Ametetarsalia laid the groundwork for walking on two legs, and dinosaurs ran with it. No pun intended. However, in the early Triassic, some crocodile relatives were also bipedal. Take Ephigia, for example, a Shuvusaurid that looked like a small theropod dinosaur, but was actually more closely related to crocodiles. But none of this would have happened if archosaurs hadn't survived the greatest extinction in Earth's history. Roughly 252 million years ago, the Permian-Triassic extinction event, often called the Great Dying, wiped out over 95% of species. But somehow, archosaurs endured. The reason how they managed such feats and became so successful is not entirely understood. But their small size, agility, and ability to withstand drier climates may have given them the edge. With much of the competition gone, they rapidly spread and explore ecological niches left behind. As the Triassic rolled on, archosaurs diversified into a wide array of strange and powerful forms. One of my personal favorites were the Rawisukians. Take Sarosuchus galilei for example, a giant predator that measured between 5.5 to 7 meters or 18 to 23 feet and weighed over 590 kilograms or 1,300 pounds. Rawisukians were the apex hunters of their time, ruling during the mid to late Triassic and definitely deserve their own video. Let me know if you'd like that. Meanwhile, other croc-like animals called phytosaurs, although not true archosaurs, these long-snouted aquatic predators also lived in this era. 
But by the end of the Triassic, around 201 million years ago, another extinction event struck, pruning the archosaur family tree. The Rawisukians vanished, so did the Phytosaurs. However, the stage was clear for dinosaurs to rise and for early crocline archosaurs to evolve into a wide range of forms, including the ancestors of crocodiles we know today. As we enter the Jurassic period around 200 million years ago, we start to see crocodile ancestors that are much more familiar to us. Some of the earliest crocodiles that lived at the beginning of the Jurassic were known as the Goniopholidids. These were semi-aquatic crocodilians that lived in lakes and rivers. We know this not only because their fossils are found in aquatic environments, but also because they had a golar valve, the same internal flap found in modern crocodilians that allows them to breathe through their nostrils with their mouths open underwater. Their overall body shape and lifestyle were strikingly similar to modern crocodiles. In fact, to a casual observer, a goniopholidid might look like just another croc you'd see today, even though they're separated from modern species by over 190 million years. Now, you could think that because of the similar external appearance, their hunting strategy would be like modern crocodiles. And you would be right. We can say this because of their teeth. Goniopholidids have the same conical teeth as modern crocs, perfect for grabbing prey and pull them back into the water rather than slicing flesh like terrestrial carnivores. These conical teeth, combined with their body shape, tells us they were ambush predators, just like their descendants. But the Jurassic wasn't just about rivers and swamps, some crocodile relatives took things in a different direction and went fully marine. These are the Phalateosuchians, the so-called sea crocodiles. This group split into major groups, the teleosauroids, which still looked and lived like river crocs, with back osteoderms and semi-aquatic habitats, and the metrorhynchoids, who displayed extreme adaptations for life in the open ocean. These marine crocs, especially members of the family metrorhynchine, were radically adapted for ocean life. They evolved flippers instead of limbs, tail flukes for propulsion, and even smooth, scaleless skin. A crocodile morph with smooth skin. Now that's something you don't see every day. Well, unless you lived in the ocean during the Jurassic period. Some of these marine crocs evolved into some of the largest oceanic predators of the time, such as Plesiosuchus, that got close to 7 meters or 23 feet, rivaling Plesiosaurs and Ichthyosaurs in size and power. However, despite their name meaning sea crocodiles, Halatosuchians are not direct ancestors of modern crocodiles and eventually went extinct. But while the marine crocs faded away, others took rivers, lakes and floodplains across the globe and some grew so monstrous that not even dinosaurs were safe. By the time the Cretaceous period rolled around, crocodilians were far from background players. Some had evolved into top predators on land, competing directly with dinosaurs. One of them was Barosuchus, a croc that abandoned the water to stalk prey on dry land. Weighing up to 113 kilograms or 250 pounds, it wasn't the biggest, but its skull and teeth tell a deadly story. Its bite strategy resembled that of a Komodo dragon, ambush prey, sinking those blade-like serrated teeth and rip backwards. Definitely not a fun way to go. But the Cretaceous didn't just give us agile land hunters, it also gave us giants. One of them was Dinosuchus, a name that literally means terrible crocodile. This giant reptile had very similar proportions to modern crocodiles, just scaled up. Some estimates say it could reach 10 meters or 33 feet and weighed it as much as 5 tons or just over 11,000 pounds. However, there are estimates that suggest even bigger individuals, reaching up to 12 meters long or 39 feet and weighing 8.5 tons or 18,000 pounds. That's almost twice the length of a saltwater crocodile, the largest reptile alive today. So yes, it was a big crocodilian. And of course, with a body that big, it also ate big. Paleontologists found hadrosaur bones with puncture marks that match Dinosuchus' teeth. This giant croc may have ambushed dinosaurs at riverbanks, dragging them to the water and drowning them. But even in the water, animals weren't safe. 
Marine turtles seem to have been frequent prey for Dinosuchus, as several bite marks have been documented on sea turtle fossils. Interestingly enough, it is thought that Dinosuchus could perform a death roll, just like its modern descendants. Which I don't know about you, but seeing one of these giant crocodilians erupt from the water to snatch a dinosaur and do a death roll, that would have been pretty cool to witness. Now, here's a twist. Dinosuchus was not a true crocodile and was more closely related to alligators than they are to crocodiles. Now, this might seem confusing, because traditionally crocodiles and alligators were thought to be more closely related, with the gharials seen as the odd ones out. However, more recent DNA analyses have turned that idea onto its head. Crocodiles and gharials are actually more closely related to each other than either is to alligators. This led scientists to define the new clade Longirostris, which includes both crocodiles and gaviolites, now only represented by the gharial and the false gharial. In fact, crocodiles and alligators split from a common ancestor over 80 million years ago. That's an even older divergence than the one between whales and hippos. To put that in perspective, the Tyrannosaurus rex went extinct 66 million years ago. This means that we humans are closer in time to Tyrannosaurus rex than crocodiles are to alligators. Pretty wild, right? But no matter how terrifying or successful these ancient crocs were, even the great ones couldn't outrun what came next. At the end of the Cretaceous, the world changed forever. An asteroid struck the Earth with a force of 100 million nuclear bombs. Wildfires burned the planet, mega tsunamis 100 meters tall swept across continents, and in the aftermath, a dense sulfurous cloud blocked the sun for months, maybe years, reducing photosynthesis by up to 90% in many regions. Without plants, there wasn't enough food for large herbivorous dinosaurs. No herbivores meant there wasn't enough food for the large carnivorous dinosaurs. As a result, most of the giants vanished. But crocodiles survived. Not because of luck, but rather their biology. Crocodiles are generalists and will eat almost anything, even scavenging on dead animals. They have slow metabolisms, able to go months without eating. But also, when they did hunt as ambush predators, they wouldn't have needed to expend as much energy as other animals while hunting, like dinosaurs. With most of the sunlight blocked by the dust cloud thrown into the atmosphere, the average global temperatures may have dropped as much as 20 degrees Celsius or 38 Fahrenheit. These ancient crocs may have entered a state like brumation, a kind of hibernation seen in modern alligators, when metabolism and body temperature drop when temperatures fall during the winter. They might have used the same behavior, only emerging for basking or when environmental conditions permitted, which may have helped them survive when others went extinct. These survivors gave rise to the three major groups of modern crocodilians. Crocodiles, family Crocodilidae, Gharials, family Gavialidae, Alligators and Caimans, family Alligatoridae. They may look ancient, and in some ways they are, but crocodiles are not living fossils. They're survivors, refined but not frozen. From their small land-dwelling ancestors to the river amateurs we know today, their story is one of extraordinary adaptation, resilience, and evolutionary efficiency. Crocodiles may look ancient, but that doesn't mean they stopped evolving. Over 200 million years, crocodile relatives took on stunning forms, fast bipedal land predators, scaleless marine hunters, and river giants that drag dinosaurs to their doom. The semi-aquatic ambush predators that we see today are just the last living echoes of a once vast and diverse group. No longer the giant monsters of the past, but their legacy lives on in the quiet ripples of the riverbank. Because, beneath the armored skin, the interlocking teeth and that cold stare lies a reptile that outlived empires, survived mass extinctions and watched the last of the non-avian dinosaurs vanish.